Hey guys, Coach Justin here. I'm going to be talking to you about a movement that we have in our grind track for today that I've gotten a little bit of questions on. So this one is going to be a kettlebell stiff-legged deadlift using the belt squat. But the kicker is that you're going to be standing on two 12-inch boxes. So why for the 12-inch boxes? We're actually trying to get you guys, one, to get a little more tension on that band, but then two, so that your kettlebell has the opportunity to pass through that full range of motion. So by standing on that elevated position, it's obviously going to put more tension on the bands and then for that kettlebell to be able to pass through that full range of motion there in between. So uh, a few different ways you can set this up. If you don't have a belt squat, I'll show you with the belt squat first and then I'll show you our uh, at home version for those who don't have a ATP or a uh, belt squat. So first things first, uh, we're going to set up our bands. Just take my bands right here and I place them underneath the uh, loading pins. All right, and then I'm just going to uh, drape one side over on here. And I'm going to take all that slack out. Again, this is supposed to be max band tension, so it's going to be pretty stiff here. Um, now, you can use as many bands or as thick of a band as you want, but I like to make sure that my bands are nice and dressed up when I'm doing this. So I'm going to take it here, and I'm just going to pull all that slack out, and I'm going to keep feeding it through. Just maybe a little bit more slack here. Feed it through. And then come over here and loop it onto the other side. Cool. And then always go back behind yourself and dress your bands up so that nothing crazy happens while you're doing your banded work. You want equal tension and pressure on both sides and it looks like we got that. So we're good with our bands. Next thing is I'm going to go ahead and get set up in my belt squat. Once you get strapped into your band you're going to go ahead and squat it up. And then from there you're going to send those hips back because it is a stiff legged kettlebell deadlift. So send the hips back keeping a soft bend in the knees right there and then you're going to come till you get that full range of motion and then snap the hips through. Three, Make sure you're keeping the weight one, in the heels at all times. You get a little toe you can see how that might be detrimental and get pulled off the boxes so we want to make sure that we're doing this safely. Let's come back down squat all the way back down until you feel that hit the cradle and rest and then you can come out of that position right there. Uh, the good thing about the belt squat is it allows you to load pretty heavy with your weight and your bands and it applies lots of traction down versus the compression force if you were to do this with a uh, barbell on your back. So it actually allows you to load pretty heavy with the legs, the hamstrings, and it creates that distraction there for people who have like herniated discs and things like that. So really good option. If that's not available to you, the homemade version. <laughs> Take yourself a dip belt. You're just going to anchor a couple bands like this. The more bands, obviously, the more weight you need to hold it down. And you're going to stand on your 12 inch boxes. Right here, uh, this is where you can make your adjustments to the uh, carabiner, making sure that you got the appropriate amount of tension. You can always start off lighter and then go heavier with this. So I'm just going to clip in. And then I'm going to dress my bands up again because I don't want the bands getting caught or ripped on the chains. So I'm going to put that in the right place step up and now I have the band tension pulling the hips down. It's not as effective as a belt squat but this is also a great option if you don't have the belt squat readily available to you. Again, if I move this carabiner further down on the chain and I apply more pressure I can get more band tension on this movement. So from here I'm going to do the same exact movement, soft bend in the knees, pushing the hips back and then snap hips forward. Allowing us to really attack the hamstrings while simultaneously applying that downward pressure onto our hips. Great movement. If you try it out today, let us know what you think.